Welcome to the last session of uh, data analysis and visualization module. So, okay, we uh, finished the principal component analysis uh, review. So, as you can see here, uh, in PCA, principal component analysis, we were talking about a large number of features. In NMF, we similarly we have a large number of features. At the same time, we have a perhaps low number of samples. In a non-negative matrix factorization, uh, we are facing with limited number of samples, and also the technique is just for the positive numeric values, okay? In PCA, we don't have these uh, uh, assumptions. So in NMF, we have a, a data set which uh, have the constraint of being positive. That's, that's called NMF or non-negative matrix factorization. So, and the aim is, again, projection or reducing the dimension as well as clustering. NMF actually could provide us uh, more uh, clustering actually characteristic uh, compared to uh, PCA. So we are asked to cluster these samples into different groups based on firstly reducing the dimensions of feature space and then a clustering Met. So the feature, one to 1,000 number of features, we have 100 samples. The aim is reducing this data set into K features and M samples, and then uh, visualizing the data using PCA with the cluster labels originated from NMF or any other clustering techniques. So one of the the difficulties of all clustering results is they are not reliable or it, they are not consistent in generating the results. It means if you run one a specific clustering technique with different initialization settings, so you will get different results in every iteration or every run. So that's why we are saying that it's not consistent, it's not uh, same result every uh, time actually we are running the algorithm. So, and this is one of the uh, challenges, uh, ch one of the most challenging part of the uh, clustering or grouping uh, samples in uh, data analytics. Okay. Another difficulty that we have in uh, clustering techniques is the number of identifying the number of clusters that we are uh, looking for or we are going to find. So uh, technically for most clustering technique we don't know the number of clusters so in that case if you look at this example we have two features M1 and M2 and after clustering we will get even with the best uh, clustering results or even sometimes consensus clustering, we may get this type of result. This actually shows that apart from the analytics and the, uh, whatever actually we're doing in a technical perspective, we have to look at the interpretation of these clusters or the meaning of the clusters based on the data set that we have. If this is biological data, you have to see which group of this data, for instance, for this case, is there any meaningful biological interpretation behind this grouping of samples versus the two? Or similarly, if we have four subgroup, if there is, whether there is any interpretation, biological interpretation in terms of the uh, I mean, data set or not. So that's why clustering by itself is really challenging 
And still, if you look at the publication, every year we have loads of publication in clustering, improving the performance, etc. So, but this is a part of a story that we always, after clustering, we're looking at the interpretation of the result. So non-negative matrix factorization, or NMF, as uh, we mentioned, a dimensionality reduction technique based on the decomposition by part, we say, which is an efficient method for identification of distinct patterns. That's why it can be used for class discovery and uh, cluster. There are loads of application, and the main part of the idea behind the NMF is in this decomposition uh, formula we have a matrix A with a dimension of n by m, n features, m samples and we are going to decompose this function, this sorry data set into two multiplication of two matrices. The W matrix, matrix is n features and k metagene and the H matrix is K metagen and M samples. Usually K, which is called the rank of H, is very uh, small compared to uh, N, and N is the number of features, okay? Technically, the aim of the composition is finding the best K or the best rank of decomposition or this uh, separation of uh, or decomposition would be the better the best uh, the uh, best definition okay so we mentioned about rank etc and uh, I'm going to show you this one so this is a it was a good example of factorizing a matrix a into two matrices and as you can see because the original uh, publication in nature uh, was linked to both image application image processing application as well as gene that's why this decomposition uh, technique uh, deal with a metagene name as a meta feature okay so what uh, what we are saying here is we have n feature and m samples decomposed into two matrices and each metagene or meta feature is uh, in this case a linear combination of a number of features originated from the input data set so it's a combination technically if i actually looking at the mathematics this would be let's say a combination of some genes providing you metagene or meta features, okay? So, and by this decomposition, as you can see from this example, we had uh, the values, this uh, heat map illustrates the numeric values between let's say zero to one. Zero is, uh, I mean, the blue one actually illustrated uh, uh, for zero and red for one. So, and each row represent gene and each column represent one sample. When we decompose into two matrices, we will get N genes as input data set, K metagene, and K metagene and M sample. And interestingly, when we evaluate the H matrix, the coefficient matrix, we realize that we will have two sets of data. The samples, as you can see, for instance, for this case, we have K is two, and we have two sets of data. This heat map uh, shows the color and uh, shows the uh, similarity of samples uh, which are here, versus here belonging to one specific group, the blue one. And another one can be uh, the green one, which is linked to the uh, red-ish uh, areas, 
Okay, so by this type of decomposition, we at the same time achieved a clustering technique, a clustering result. We separated these samples and then they evaluated in this publication, they evaluated the, uh, uh, the interpretation of these samples class groups and they realized that there are very strong pattern or meaning behind the, this grouping for clustering. But not to mention that you cannot get always some meaningful uh, concept from the decomposition for NMF. So in that case, if you didn't get any meaningful interpretation from the NMF decomposition, you need to apply uh, appropriate clustering result on the NMF uh, result, which is H matrix. Okay, this was an example that I show you, we have uh, matrix A, 17 features, 220 samples, and then when we, when we decompose, it changed to 17K, K220 for W and H correspondingly, and then we found the K as the best rank, okay? So this was a short algorithm, short uh, uh, guidance for uh, helping you to uh, extract H matrix with the best K, set the parameters and run one of the NMF algorithms for various K, because we don't know exactly what is the uh, what is the optimum value or the best value for K. We have to get a range from two to eight, which is dependent on the number of input features, input features, and then assess quality criteria to find the best rank and after running uh, as I also, uh, also mentioned uh, there are different type of algorithms for implementing NMF and uh, which I suggested NS NMF which more common in uh, different uh, application and then using NMF I'm going to skip these lines we uh, after running NMF by initialization setting we will get uh, NMF rank cell, okay? So in which we can see different criterion, different coefficient representing uh, the best K or the best rank of the decomposition technique. So these are three important coefficients in which as you can see, we have for cofenetic dispersion and silhouette, we can see the increase in the coefficient, uh, cofenetic coefficient, and in four, this value actually get maximum and then decreasing or uh, start uh, uh, be, uh, falling down to uh, rank eight. So four is the highest one and with this trend again we will check for the dispersion the same story we have increasing and then decreasing so the silhouette actually is linked to the clustering result uh, obtained from the NMF so again when NMF actually using uh, clustering and specifically consensus on uh, coefficient matrix so you will get the green one and in a consensus way with multiple one uh, we will get the, uh, the purple uh, one which shows again the highest values uh, for uh, uh, link with the best rank. So and if you perhaps some of you done uh, NMF analytics uh, or maybe input data set for question two. So, and if you didn't get any promising uh, rank of K, so you can just get, you just, just ignore NMF, because uh, again, as I already mentioned, rank number two, if, if you get the K rank uh, equal to, so, and then decreasing, so let's say, uh, two is sorting from here, two, three, four, five. So being maximum for two is not 
necessarily going to be a, a best rank, and two is exception. Uh, not to mention that we have to see the increasing values of the coefficient, getting the maximum, and then decreasing. This is the best way of evaluating. And you can think logically, if you use NMF for uh, a data set with 440 features converted, I mean produced, uh, reduced to two metagenes or two meta features, it's, it's really hard to believe this number of reduction, you know, from 440 features to two, it's possible. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but maybe it's very rarely actually happening this uh, type of uh, <coughs> acceptable rank K equals two. So anyway, this, these are the definition, uh, these are some criteria which we are using for uh, identifying the best rank and uh, I think yeah for this case we found the uh, four as the best rank uh, with the result this is the W matrix this is the H matrix and uh, basis and coefficient and then we if we use the uh, consensus matrix here we will get uh, after clustering uh, using NMF, we will get four groups of uh, four groups of data, which link to uh, samples. The columns are samples, and the rows are uh, features. And uh, when we compare the samples with the original or reference subgroup, we realize that. In uh, most cases, except one or two cases, the rest of them uh, provided us uh, accurate clustering results. Uh, this is again another uh, uh, type of illustration of heat using heat map of a consensus matrix for different uh, rank, different ranks, and as you can see, for a rank equals four, we have the best, the cleanest uh, uh, heat map in terms of uh, grouping uh, samples and providing this uh, uh, clean uh, heat map with the coefficient of one for the group of samples uh, illustrated here. Okay. <coughs> Any any question here? Okay. Last but not least, in terms of uh, clustering, we we mentioned that using just one clustering method, one clustering algorithms uh, is not enough for producing the consistent or reliable clustering uh, groups, okay? The reason is the clustering techniques are sensitive to initialization settings, uh, importantly. And that's why we have to go for consensus, uh, consensus approach in a technique that we can take benefit of different clustering or multiple running of one type of clustering. Okay, so this is, this is for the scheme that we have where K means clustering here, but in a multiple run of uh, uh, multiple runs and as you can see here uh, we have we can have a subsample selection of input data set which we call bootstrapping subsample selection <coughs> s1 s2 sn and we could have uh, different clustering results not to mention that for our cases uh, i would suggest to use uh, just s not different subsample selection because 
because of this uh, because of this uh, simplicity that we were expecting to see from the result. Okay, so and then the result has to be uh, need to be needs to be aggregated or combined uh, as uh, the final uh, result. So let me see if I could actually find one uh, example of. So if you, if you recall, if we run k-means clustering algorithm in a different iteration uh, with different uh, initial settings, we will get different uh, cluster labels. Each columns, each columns represent the cluster labels or groupings for these uh, 12 perhaps samples. So, and as you can see, we have different uh, cluster uh, labels, which could be logically identical, could be different. So, and for the uh, question two, I'm expecting you to combine this result. So there is a function called consensus in R that you can combine, you can actually use this function as well. If you uh, realize that combining these uh, cluster labels is really hard, you can actually go for the uh, consensus uh, function. It's not the perfect solution, but at least you can get the uh, uh, good marks uh, for using consensus of cluster increase. Okay. So these are uh, different sets, uh, different classroom results, and if you remember, we work on this uh, for identifying the uh, logically identical uh, cluster labels. So hope hope everyone actually enjoyed uh, this uh, module. Uh, good luck with your uh, individual coursework too. I hope. This session actually was useful for uh